So, dear friends, we wish you a very warm welcome to Lower Hamlet Online. We are very happy that we get to enjoy the last days of the year with you as a spiritual family. Tonight, our first teaching will be offered by Sister Hinnim. Sister Hinnim is also known as Sister True Dedication. She has a very deep aspiration to bring engaged Buddhism into the world and she spends a lot of her time and energy into sharing the practice with young people and into doing actions that can help Mother Earth. And uh, Sister Hinim has many hobbies and one of her favorite things is to enjoy a cup of coffee with a cat on her lap. So with the next sound of the small bell, we can stand up or stay seated and bow in respect to Sister Hinim for offering the teaching tonight. Thank you. So dear beloved community, before we enjoy three sounds of the bell, I wanted just to say hello to everybody. Hello to everybody online. We are so happy to have you here with us. And thank you 
for inviting us into your homes. I feel that through the screen, we, we, we are coming into your home. So thank you for inviting us into your home. And we're happy to invite you into our home and into our hearts. And um, the, the chat is open. And so I wonder, for those of you who would like, you can just greet one another in the chat. And maybe you can share where you're, where you're joining us from. And if you want to express a greeting, uh, you can also express a greeting in your own language if you want. It's very nice to feel all the, the different countries and languages that are participating with us today. And over the next few days, there will be more than uh, 500 of us following this retreat. And because of the time zone issues, perhaps just a few hundred at a time on Zoom. But even if you're watching this as a recording, we, s we see you, we feel you, and we're very happy that everyone can join us. So I'm, I'm, I'm squinting my eyes to see the chat a little bit, but I can't quite read the... <laughs> I <laughs> can't quite read all the words. We're able to see you on a screen in front of us. So you are also, your image is also sitting in this meditation hall with us. So that's very beautiful. And the Sangha is enjoying smiling to you. Um, smiling to you on the screen. And today is also a very happy moment because we're also, we've been able to receive our first kind of in-person guests in the Upper Hamlet and the New Hamlet. So today is a real day of celebration for all of us to really feel connected to you, to our beloved international community. And we're so happy to be able to continue to offer, offer the practice online with you all. So the, the theme of our retreat together is the gift of a quiet mind. And some of us may have uh, received wonderful gifts uh, in this holiday season, uh, but perhaps the greatest gift of all is the gift of, of peace, of uh, compassion, and of presence, our true presence and the, the presence um, of our loved ones. And we hope that over the next few days, we'll really be able to cultivate this um, presence, this quality of, of peace and quiet that, that we are thirsty for and that our loved ones are thirsty for. So we may think that we're doing this retreat as a a treat for ourselves, but it's also a treat for everyone around us because we know that our peace, our calm, and our presence immediately benefits those, those around us. And the title is funny because it says, uh, the gift of a quiet mind, but we also know that a quiet mind can only exist with a quiet body. <laughs> Our mind is not something separate from, from our body. The two really um, coexist, co-manifest. And so I would like to start our time together uh, this evening with really taking care of our body in preparation to welcome uh, three sounds of the bell. So wherever you're sitting at home, um, maybe take a moment and see w how we might improve our posture. <laughs> so to really um, pay attention, for example, to our back, can we make it a little more, little more upright? Um, if we're leaning against something, we may say, okay, for the next five or ten minutes, I'll just really enjoy my spinal co column. I will really enjoy the trunk of my body and its uprightness. And we know that in that, there is also space and peace, and perhaps our shoulders, we can roll them open a little bit. Some of us, uh, it's very easy in front of the screen, we get drawn into the screen and our shoulders may roll in and we can kind of roll them open. 
and our neck, we can uh, stretch it slightly behind and maybe tuck our chin in a little bit so we really feel our head kind of floating gently above our spine. And I hope that our, our knees and lower body are comfortable uh, wherever we're sitting. And maybe we can also take a moment to wriggle our fingers. <laughs> our hands are very busy in the era of devices. So we carry some tension in our hands. So it's very nice to release that tension. And then we will gently place one hand in front of the, on top of the other in our lap. And that will allow our shoulders, our whole upper body to be relaxed and our hands nicely rested in our lap. So as we enjoy a sound of the bell, we may like to close our eyes if we feel comfortable to do so. And we really allow ourselves to enjoy this awareness of our body. And as we listen to the sound of the bell, we can say, I listen, I listen. This wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. I listen, I listen. This wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. As we breathe in, we can gently relax the muscles on our face, our jaw, our shoulders, allow them to soften. And as we breathe out, we can smile to our body. How wonderful to be alive. Relaxing and softening our body, enjoying being alive. And as we follow our in breath and follow our out breath, we can become fascinated by the experience of our body breathing. And we may notice that our in-breath grows a little deeper and our out-breath grows a little slower. Breathing in deeper, breathing out slower.
And as we be continue to follow our breathing, we may feel this energy of calm gently permeating our body and mind and the energy of ease. Breathing in, feeling more calm. Breathing out, feeling at ease. We can open our eyes a little bit, smile to ourselves and to one another on the screen. In just a few breaths, we can generate an energy that is a little bit more calm than before, a little bit more quiet, a little bit more peaceful. And this is really the challenge of these coming days for us, to create moments of peace and stillness in our day and in the times that we are online together. And I think many of us have joined this retreat, hopefully, because we were inspired by the theme. There may be some of us that wanted to join the retreat, but we weren't sure about the theme. <laughs> but we just wanted to feel connected to spiritual community. And so there may be a few of us for whom there's a question, which is something like, um, do we have the right to touch peace in such a difficult time for our world? Do we have the right to, f to feel peace? We know there is a lot of suffering. We know there are those. We know there are those who are sick right now, or those of us, and we know that our loved ones may be not well right now. We know there is violence, oppression around the world, inequality, discrimination. We know there is a lot of suffering for those who don't have a safe home, who are forced to flee their homes. And as practitioners, as people with awareness and compassion, we may really have that question, do, I, do we have the right uh, to touch peace in such a situation? I've been uh, sitting and walking with this question uh, the last few days. And for me, uh, one of my uh, uh, reflections is that we are also part of this situation. And by offering a different energy, by offering the energy of peace to this situation, we are already contributing something more positive. We're already changing the situation. Compassion and empathy and really that feeling of suffering with and being aware of has its place. But the energy of peace also has its place. And with the insight of interbeing, we know that that, uh, that that resonates with everyone to whom we're connected. And maybe there are those who don't have enough conditions to generate peace. And it's up to us to help generate it on their behalf as well. So also for others. And I think part of the suffering that many of us are experiencing right now is also um, for those of us who haven't ourselves directly 
uh, been experiencing these challenges or maybe um, we ourselves may not have become very, very sick. So the suffering is also the suffering of worry and anxiety and concern. So it's a suffering in the mind. And so the best way we can take care of that suffering is also in the mind. So to, to cultivate a quiet mind, peace and compassion in our mind is action. It is action already to respond to the collective energy of anxiety and anguish in the world. So don't think that coming on this retreat is somehow an escape. This is also a, a response. We're responding to the collective energy with a different quality of energy. We are helping bring balance, helping offer an element that is lacking. We can say that uh, calm, compassion, uh, clarity, maybe even stillness, a lack of restlessness, these are rare resources right now. And, and we may have felt that quite keenly in our families, in our workplaces, in our environment and our communities. We may have felt that there, there isn't so much clarity and calm as maybe uh, two or three years ago. So that makes it all the more important for us to intentionally and actively cultivate it. Mm. So we can speak of the energy of uh, restlessness and fear and anxiety, and we're, we're meeting that energy with another energy, which can be the energy of stability, of compassion, and of non-fear. A spacious energy that has space to, to include within it the anxiety and the fear. We don't reject it, we don't bypass it, but we have enough stability and peace to be able to embrace it. Like many of us uh, in the last few weeks, I have had loved ones who have got sick with COVID, in particular my sister and her whole family. And I realized that uh, my dial of restlessness <laughs> went right up. And this must be the same for so many of us. It is so hard to be at peace when we feel so powerless to be able to help. And of course, those who are sick isolate, so we can't be with them in the normal way that we might want to be with them. And I really had to train myself every time I felt the, the energy of anxiety or worry coming up. I had to really train myself to come back to my breathing to come back to my body and to know that the best thing I can offer her is my stability, my calm, my peace, my, my tenderness, my gentleness, and not my worry. <laughs> so I kept on wanting to catch my uh, thoughts of worry <laughs> and replace them with other kinds of thought that I, I could share with her. So maybe we can continue our training a little bit and see how our breathing can be something that can help us embrace a moment of worry or anxiety. And we're very lucky that on this retreat, almost half of us uh, are already very familiar with our practice. I think um, almost half of us have already received the five mindfulness trainings. So you're well on this beautiful path. So there's a part of us, we know the practice. We, we, we know how to breathe. And um, also here in the monastery, of course, we all know how to breathe too. But the question is, are we, are we making use of our breathing in the moments when we, when we need it most? Are we able to take refuge in our breathing to really quieten our anxiety when it comes up. 
Is your breath something that you can find and meet and take refuge in whenever you need it? Or is it something that is only a friend when we're already sitting on the meditation cushion or when we hear a sound of the bell? And I think part of the art with our practice is to make sure that our connection to our breath is very close, very intimate, and very, um, a very safe refuge for us. For many of us, we, especially when we feel anxious, we may tend to breathe. Our breath gets a bit shorter. Our breath holds a lot of information. And when we're feeling anxious, it may be a little shorter and more tense. And when we're able to bring our breathing really down to our abdomen, so we're really releasing the tension in our body to allow our breath to be a really deep breath. It can be a longer breath. It can be, in my experience, a more soothing breath when we can really make it a deeper breath. So I invite you, including those of you who already know the practice, I invite you to really take your hand and to place it in what we call our Tantian point, which is just below our belly button. And see how easy it is to bring our awareness right down to this point and to find that stability with our breathing. Can we join our breathing here? Breathing in, feeling the stability to be grounded at this part of our trunk, the really stable part of our body's tree. And breathing out, really enjoying this stability. Breathing in, feeling that stability. Breathing out, enjoying this stability. And now we open up our attention to be aware of any anxiety, any worry that we have in our heart right now. It may be worry for a loved one. It may be worry for ourselves. And breathing in, simply becoming aware of that worry. It may even have a particular place in our body or mind. As we breathe in, we identify it. And as we breathe out, we really embrace it. We include it in our mindful breathing. Breathing in, I know you're there, my fear, my anxiety. Breathing out, I embrace you gently. I embrace you tenderly. And the breathing's a clever thing because this act of breathing with our awareness accompanying our breathing, our mindfulness and tenderness, tenderness gently embraces the anxiety. It's no longer alone. We are there with it. And as we continue to breathe in, we can really expand this energy of awareness and compassion. And as we breathe out, we can offer that energy of compassion to those we love, to those we are worrying for.
generating an energy of compassion and offering that energy of compassion. So a very interesting thing about being quiet is we don't necessarily want to send away all the elements that make us not quiet. We want to be able to recognize them, to embrace them tenderly, and to offer a kind of antidote or a, a counterpart energy to, to meet uh, the obstacles to our quiet and to, to be with them, to soften them, to integrate them, allow them to be there, but also allow the peace and the compassion to be there with them. So you may have seen in our uh, retreat uh, uh, schedule at the top, there are lots of different invitations. And one of the invitations is to download the Plum Village app and to activate the bell on the Plum Village app. And I really want to invite all of you to do this. So if you haven't yet downloaded the app, please do it. Um, I feel I want to show it to you, but I won't. You, you know what it might look like. Plum Village app, you find it, you download it. And please, during this retreat, activate the bell on your app so that in the moments when we are not uh, together on screen like this, you have a chance to hear the sound of the bell perhaps every 30 minutes or every hour. And you can set it however you would like. And this will really help keep the thread of the retreat in between the different sessions that we are doing together online. And as we hear the sound of the bell, we stop whatever we're doing. So for those of you who've been to Plum Village, you know that we've got lots of different bells in Plum Village. We have a clock in the dining hall. We have what we call the activity bell that lets us know something's about to happen. Uh, maybe for you that means you set a little alarm on your phone before, <laughs> before the next retreat session. Um, and we also stop when we hear the sounds um, of the, the, the big bell um, or of course the bell in the meditation hall. And this is a training to come back to our body and breathing, no matter what is going on, there's something very uh, empowering about it because we say we will not be swept away by whatever life is unfolding. Um, we, we hear the sound of the bell and we come back to our body. And the practice is to not speak anymore, not do any more kind of physical action, and to follow three full in and out breaths. So let's practice with the sound of the bell. See how easy this is to do, or how challenging. So the question is, was this a pleasant experience or was there some resistance in us? With the stopping with the sound of the bell, the kind of challenge is to see that this sound is a friend. It's an invitation. It's not someone else, uh, not <laughs> Sister Dedication or Sister Come Through at the bell. We are not the ones making us want to stop. The idea is that the bell should feel like, um, we say, 
um, a voice from within calling us to stop and arrive home. A voice within calling us to a quiet place. And each of your quiet place may be different from each of our quiet place. And we hope that during the coming few days, we'll be able to really take, ca take care of this quiet place inside so that it's something that we feel comfortable to come back to. For some of us, our body may not feel a safe place to come back to. When we stop and hear a sound of the bell, that may be the last place we want to come to, the breath and the body. So sometimes I also just hold one finger. It, sometimes it's my pinky, sometimes it's one finger here. And instead of the challenge of following my breathing, I'm just enjoying uh, that feeling of, of, of holding my finger, feeling connection. I also uh, use the, the beads, and um, we call these a mala, and I think in many spiritual traditions we have them. And we can challenge ourselves maybe to, to follow one in-breath and one out-breath for each of the beads. And that movement of the hands may be a little bit easier to feel like we can find a safety and a thread of connection. And for those of us that have been practicing a while, we have to get quite creative to keep our practice of stopping with the bell fresh. And so some of you may have had the bell sound on the app at some point, and then we turn it off <laughs> because it wasn't working anymore because we were ignoring it too much. So for those of you who had done that, I invite you, please try again the next four days. Uh, try the beginner's mind to see if there's a way we can really make a commitment and a freshness to say, I, I am thirsty for quiet. I am thirsty for stillness. And this bell is helping remind me to touch it. In those key moments in the day when I really am swept away, because it's those moments when we're the most, bi the most caught up, whether in cooking or speaking or doing something else, they're the moments when it's the most powerful to just stop come back to ourselves, to our hand or our beads, and say there's more, there's more to life than just this endless running. There's power in the stopping. Uh, one time, it was the first time I had a chance to be an attendant for Thai, and uh, we had just, uh, I'd just prepared him a cup of tea before walking meditation and then right next to his room here in the Lower Hamlet is the activity bell. And I was so nervous because I, I had only been ordained at that point, I think four months or something. And uh, Tai was resting in his hammock and looking right at me as the bell sounded. And so of course I know, okay, I have to close my eyes, follow, listen to the bell. But I was so aware of my teacher like looking at me <laughs> with his like hawk eyes. <laughs> and really trying to stop and really trying to breathe, but I was so nervous that um, I think the quality of stopping was not very deep. And then I opened my eyes and Ty was still looking right at me. <laughs> and then he said, hmm, the mind is like a CD. Even you press stop, it's still spinning. <laughs> I thought he sees me directly. He sees me very clearly. And I, what I learned from that was, I had still done the right thing. We still press stop. It's the, the, we still press stop, we stop our body, and even the mind uh, may still take time to kind of uh, slow down. Slowly, slowly, the training um, uh, will uh, build up, and the, the stopping will be more complete, more readily. And, uh, so please stick to this practice, please integrate it into the coming days. Uh, and, and if we don't want to install the app, or um, we have some resistance to the sound of the bell, we can find, choose other things that can act as our bell of mindfulness. 
So it might be if you live near a road, it might be the sound of a truck rumbling by, <laughs> or if you live near a train, or if you live in a city, it might be the sirens of the emergency services, or if we have others in the house with us, perhaps like a very difficult habit of our housemate, <laughs> every time they cough like that or uh, do something, that can be our bell of mindfulness. And we stop, close our eyes, and just breathe in and out three times. So uh, it's, a, it's a challenge to be creative with, and it's essential to generating quietness of mind. We are challenging the internal discourse to naturally stop and it's not because we say to ourselves, I want to stop thinking, but what we're doing is we're bringing our awareness to our body, our breathing, or our hand, or our beads. We're, we're choosing an object of awareness and we're becoming fascinated by it. We enjoy being with this object of our awareness and that makes it impossible for the thinking to continue because we're enjoying so much the coolness of the air as it flows in, the refreshment for the body, and then the ease and relax relaxation as we breathe out. So it, feeling, the bodily experience of feeling is what is helping us quieten our mind. We're just a breathing body in that moment and we're becoming fascinated by that experience of our body in the body. We call it mindfulness of the body in the body. As we stop with the sound of the bell and breathe. I think this retreat is a kind of practice of stopping. Many of us may have had quite a frenetic few months and the holiday season also brings with it its own challenges for many of us and this is a time to practice uh, I think what we call wintering I think we can make the word winter into a verb we are wintering in this retreat we are stopping doing what we normally do and we're taking time to be still to simplify hopefully, what will be happening in the next few days and to really rest and come inwards. And I think this is very natural to do and I think all of us, we need wintering time every year. Just like the earth needs this wintering time. Maybe outside is uh, turbulent and stormy it definitely seems that way for our society, for our world, and we want to come inwards. And some of us may know a story that Tai often tells about uh, one time when he was uh, living in Paris before he'd even uh, found um, the land of Plum Village and moved here. And they had a small hermitage up near the Forêt d'Ot, the forest of Dot, uh, or Dot, outside Paris, and um, it was a bright, sunny, um, I guess, autumn day, and Tai had uh, um, gone for a walk in the woods, and he was enjoying him so much, himself so much, he spent the whole afternoon out in the woods, I think sitting, and walking, contemplating, but then suddenly the weather turned, and and a, there was a storm on the horizon, and Tai had to rush back from the forest to his hermitage. And because it had been such a sunny day, he'd left all the windows open to air the, air the, the room. But I guess he had gone for a long walk in the forest, because by the time he came back, it was already windy and rainy, and he you know, burst into his hermitage, and everything was already in disarray from the storm and the papers were everywhere and things had been blown about and knocked off the table. And the first thing that Tai did was to close the windows, to 
closed the door, closed the windows, and then he lit a fire to warm up the room because I think it was a stone building, so it was very cold. And then once the fire was lit, he was able then to clean up all the papers and everything that was in disarray, and then to sit by the fire and warm his hands and fingers, to enjoy the coziness of the fire and listen to the wind and rain beating on the windows. And I think for many of us, this is the kind of experience we want to have of creating an island within over the coming days. We need to be able to close the doors and windows to the storm outside in the world, to be able to have some time to really take care of what is coming up inside, our feelings, our perceptions. To, that's our papers that are spread out everywhere because we haven't had time to take care of them. And to light up the fire so that we have some warmth and some coziness inside. And Thay described um, this experience of coming back to the hermitage as this practice of of cultivating an island within. And that when we have a bad day <laughs> or a bad week or a bad year, we need to know how to be able to come back to our hermitage within, to be able to close the doors and windows. And for us, that's our sense, doors and windows. So when we think about uh, what might be the obstacles to having a, a quiet mind. It's, it's all the storm around us, perhaps um, the news that we have seen or read or heard, um, the movies or uh, series that we may have been watching on the screens, the, even the conversations we may have been having with others, we may have taken in a lot of things that have been a bit chaotic and difficult. Maybe our daily life itself has been really challenging. And so uh, we invite you on this retreat to see what are the sense doors and windows that you might be able to close, to be able to simplify um, your inner island and to keep the storm at bay. So you may want to avoid reading news in the next few days. You may want to sit down and have a strategy for how you will use your devices. Um, there may be some habits maybe of listening to the radio or podcasts around breakfast time or around other times of day, and perhaps uh, we can see what elements we could simplify to bring more, more peace into, into our day, more quiet, less sensory input. Close a few doors and windows. But for some of us, silence may also be really challenging, because in the silence we may suddenly be overwhelmed by our feelings. And I remember in one uh, talk, Tai said, um, you can tell how old this talk was, um, maybe it was about 15 years ago, and Tai, tai said, sometimes, you know, life is so busy, and you have many, uh, many letters, many envelopes of mail, <laughs> like on your, <laughs> on your desk in the morning. <laughs> And he said, and you open each letter one by one, and each one is urgent. <laughs> and the next one is urgent, and the next one, and maybe you have a pile of letters that are all urgent. So, of course, I think nowadays we can translate to email or things to do. And Tai said, when everything is urgent and calling for your attention, do you know what to do? That is when you listen to music. <laughs> 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 
don't even try. Listen to music. So sometimes the music is also a kind of silence. And I said we need the, the, the music is a kind of lullaby for our store consciousness. Our, our store consciousness, the deeper consciousness within us, is turbulent. There's been so much input. And the art of mindfulness is to find what can calm and lullaby all of that turbulence. And if the silence is too challenging, then maybe you really need to curate a good uh, music playlist uh, for your whenever you might normally have some input. And so instead of going from a lot of background noise to silence, you may choose some nice, quiet, uh, music not not too sad we don't want to also water the seeds of sadness so some some pleasant uh, music and of course the bird song is another kind of music or the sound of uh, the wind in the trees it's very rare that silence is a full silence there's often a lot that we can bring our attention to and really feel the hum hum of life around us I think uh, we can enjoy a sound of the bell and see whether we can find that uh, cozy hermitage inside and the energy of mindfulness and compassion is our fire, is the warmth that we can generate simply by being there with our body and our breathing. So over the coming days, each one of us has the challenge, the task of generating the energy of mindfulness wherever we are, whether we are with others who may or may not be following the retreat <laughs> or whether we're alone. And the challenge is to be able to cultivate a spirit of quietness, a quality of peace and quietness throughout the day in all the different things that we are doing. Are we able to have a quiet mind when we brush our teeth? <laughs> are we able simply to brush our teeth without thinking about the next thing we have to do? Are we able to brush our teeth really with peace, with freedom, and without rushing. I think there's a connection between uh, quietness and stillness. So as soon as we're rushing, we are not really truly quiet and at peace in ourselves. And there's a lot to become fascinated about while we brush our teeth. And we can, um, well, if you have a mirror, you can enjoy watching yourself. You can enjoy the feel of the brush on your teeth and gums, the sounds that you make, or even simply the feeling of your feet on the ground as you brush your teeth. And sometimes you can play with brushing your teeth with the other hand, and that makes us very aware of what we're doing in case it has become something automatic. And as we're preparing our morning cup of tea or coffee, are we able to do it with a quiet mind to really bring all our attention to the feelings and actions of preparing our tea or coffee and then to sit quietly with our hot drink, enjoy the fragrance with an in-breath and out-breath and really enjoy our body as we enjoy our hot drink. And 
while we make our breakfast, that's also a moment to be quiet, to enjoy all the sounds maybe of cutting fruit or preparing bread or whatever we eat for breakfast. So this is a kind of uh, koan for us. How can we be cultivate a quiet mind in everything we are doing? If we live alone during this retreat, we really may want to pay attention uh, to the sounds that we make. When the sisters, when we do a solo retreat, that's one of the trainings that we become really aware of every sound of our feet on the floor, the opening and closing of the door, any kind of movement that we make. Um, and that can be a real um, doorway to awareness, really listening to all the sounds that we make. I described this uh, moment maybe as a time of wintering and being like the earth and resting. And I think also we are like the earth in that um, we also need a bit of uh, 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 fertilizer over, <laughs> over the winter to really nourish our soil as we let the land rest. And I think for many of us in the pandemic, all those things that uh, nourish us the most, we may not have been able to do or we may not have been able to do so much. And we may need to be creative about finding new sources of nourishment. So as we simplify our life over the next four days, also please uh, find ways to nourish yourselves, also with nature. Here in Plum Village, we're very lucky to live in the countryside, and I hope that some of you, you have a garden or a backyard or a park or a, just a tree close by that can be a source of nourishment um, over the coming days. And every day there'll be a chance to do our own walking meditation. And uh, please make a special effort, even if you can only go for a walk for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, uh, please do your best uh, to enjoy this practice. For me, being in nature or with nature, and especially with trees, is a very uh, easy way to feel the stillness and silence, really with the practice of listening, listening to the earth, to the birds, to the wind. I think it's very easy to be uh, silent, at peace, and open uh, when we are with Mother Earth. It's as though Mother Earth has a quiet mind. There's no internal dialogue. <laughs> There's just sounds and song of nature. We can also say that coming back to our body is also a kind of nourishment because maybe we have been so uh, busy or preoccupied or pulled away by our thinking that we haven't really given enough space and time to be there with our body. And in fact, all the practices on this retreat really involve being there with our body, whether we're breathing in the sitting meditation or doing the mindful movements. Um, there's a chance to do that. Um, we have some videos that you may like to follow or you may like to do your own favorite yoga practice or jogging or whatever it would be. And the walking meditation, the deep relaxations. We'll have some wonderful live relaxations on this retreat. Being there with our body is already a source of nourishment uh, for ourselves. 
And for those of us that are living with people who are not following the retreat, I also uh, want to say we, we, we feel you. We could, we're aware that this may be challenging. And one thing I think we've discovered from the previous retreats is please take care of your relationships with those around you. Uh, when we talk about uh, the hermitage where you need to shut the windows and doors, uh, if possible, please don't shut out the people you live with. <laughs> they can also be like your field of practice on this retreat. And I think probably the most simple thing that we can offer to others is our presence, our listening. And even if someone is uh, uh, not being very mindful or not speaking in a very mindful way, simply by coming back to our body and following our breathing while we listen to them, that is already a moment of practice. That is a moment of um, yeah, healing and transformation is already taking place. So it's a great fortune to have <laughs> objects of practice with you in <laughs> wherever you are. And uh, that is, please integrate that into how you're handling the retreat, um, especially around meal times. Um, of course, you can experiment if they would like to eat mindfully with you for a bit. Um, but if it's too difficult, don't even try. <laughs> it may only create friction. And perhaps maybe one meal a day you could eat separately so you can really eat slowly, especially if we have some meals that we will have online together. And even when you're washing up together with those in your home, the washing up can be a moment of mindfulness practice. You don't need to participate in conversation, but just really enjoy the hands in the soapy water, follow your breathing in that moment. And that can also be a moment when you have a quiet mind, even when there's noise going on around you. Hmm. And for those of us who are following this retreat uh, more alone, um, perhaps we're the only person in our house or our flat or our apartment. And the challenge is to really open up to all the nourishment uh, that is there around you and to see, to flip things around and that instead of feeling lonely, uh, to see all the ways in which uh, Mother Earth is there for you and the whole cosmos is there for you, embracing you in the solitude. The monastics, we like, we enjoy solitude a lot. We don't feel lonely when we're alone. And I think it's because we train ourselves slowly to see with the insight of interbeing. So a bowl of food is the Earth loving you and caring for you. She's smiling to you through the carrots, the rice, the bread, the potato, and the, the trees are smiling to you, the birds are singing for you. The earth is there for you. So that is also a challenge for those of us who are following the retreat alone, so that in between the moments when we're not on the screen, uh, find moments of connection. I would like to invite Sister uh, Chanim to come up. We say that the practice of mindfulness is uh, lighting up the energy of uh, compassion and awareness in our hearts. So the act of coming back to our breathing, coming back to our body, we are somehow lighting up uh, the energy of mindfulness. And as you know, in Plum Village, we like uh, meditation poems a lot. And Tai has written many beautiful poems that we combine uh, with different things, including, uh, including uh, turning on the light or lighting a candle. And Sister Chan Yim, uh, many of you may know, has the voice of an angel <laughs> and the heart of an angel. And there's a beautiful... Um, 
uh, gata that has been set to music for lighting up a candle. So um, we can uh, enjoy this uh, to end our Dharma, Dharma sharing, Dharma talk this, after this evening. And then perhaps after the song, then we'll hear three sounds of the bell together. Lighting this candle, offering light to countless Buddhas, the peace and joy I feel brighten the face of the earth. Lighting this candle, offering light to countless Buddhas, the peace and joy I feel brighten the face of the earth. so much dear sister thank you everyone for joining us i hope this inspires you to have a moment of quiet and peace as you light a candle in your home today for those of you who have a little altar set up um, this is a very beautiful practice to create a moment of, of peace and presence and warmth and hopefully we can find that warmth in our heart as we light the candle. So we'll have some announcements, so maybe the organizing team can come up to... Please come here. Yes, sit here. Yes. <laughs> this is Sister Hien Yun, our young uh, French-Canadian Mexican nun here in Lower Hamlet. Also my roommate. <laughs> I think when she was speaking about uh, practicing mindfulness with her, with our roommates, she was thinking about me <laughs> because I'm very clumsy and I make many things fall, so I give my sister many opportunities to breathe. <laughs> so, dear friends, thank you very much for having been together with us this evening and thank you to our sister for her inspiring talk. With the next sound of the small bell, we will stand up and bow in gratitude for our sister to have, for our sister for having shared for exp her experience with us. 
And then please uh, sit that back down again for just one minute of short announcements. Thank you. You can much. do it now. Oh, I can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you are joining the retreat uh, near the Paris time, we wish you a very good night's sleep after this so that you can wake up t uh, on time tomorrow, maybe a little bit earlier than uh, your habits. So we will start the day at 6.45 with uh, some uh, exercise to get our energy moving and prepare our body and mind for sitting. And then we will enjoy a guided sitting meditation together at 7.30. And for those of us who live in the US, we wish you a very beautiful rest of the day with your new friends, your mindful breath and steps. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you, everyone. And we will leave the, the meeting open for a few minutes for those of you who might want to connect to each other or message. And so I hope the chat can also be open for those of you who'd like to stay online a little bit. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow.